Sergio Perez has received disturbing news from Red Bull. While he has yet another year left on his contract, the future is not looking too bright for him. He will be under much pressure next season from fans, the media and his team management. The only thing we can do is see what happens. Azerbaijan's rule was a fading memory, Perez's streaking crown tarnished by Miami's heat. The Dutchman unleashed from the ninth grid slot, devouring the field and leaving Perez gasping for air. His pole was snuffed out in the wake of Verstappen's dominance. Monaco went from a dream to disaster for Perez. He zoomed into the first corner way too fast and slammed into the wall. Q1 was over before it began, leaving his Sunday race toast. Feeling desperate, he tried risky overtakes on the super tight streets, like threading a needle with a sledgehammer. A 16th place was all he could manage. Spain brought a shiny new upgrade for his car, but the track had other plans. He couldn't control his car, turns flew by, his grip vanished and another race bit the dust. The king of the streets was dethroned by his rush. Doubts started to creep in, shadows on his championship dreams. The Qatar Grand Prix was the breaking point. Lost, confidence shattered. He finished a distant 10th, over 80 seconds behind a champion, Verstappen. His title dreams dashed six races early. The warning signs were flashing, but Perez was reeling. His recent races were like a bad dream, sinking him into a swamp of doubt. He needed a lifeline, so he headed for the Team HQ, a fortress of data and machines. For three days, he and his engineers huddled, brainstorming like crazy. The wearing simulator was their compass, guiding them out of the performance pit they'd fallen into. When asked why he waited until Qatar to take action and demand a brainstorming session, Paris replied, because Qatar was really the worst weekend I remember in a while. Probably my worst weekend ever in the sport. It was such a bad weekend that I really felt like I could not be this bad. There's something that's going on. Despite securing a single Las Vegas podium in the final third of the season and ending with only half of Verstappen's point total, Perez acknowledges the need for improvement. However, he finds encouragement in his ability to regain momentum after the Qatar Grand Prix, which bodes well for his 2024 performance. I always say people will only remember where you finish in Abu Dhabi, but I'm aware of the year I had. I think I've learned a lot and I'm happy with how we managed to turn our season around. We really came out of it stronger than before and made good use of those bad days. While praising Paris's race day performance, Red Bull boss Horner expressed concerns over his driver's inconsistent qualifying results. Horner said to Sky, I think the last few races he's had a bit of a reset, Horner said. His pace when you look at the analysis through the Abu Dhabi weekend again was very strong. He's just got to sort his Saturdays out. His race pace is there. His race craft is fantastic. He's probably overtaken more cars than anybody this year. But we just need him to be starting in the first four rather than ninth or tenth, whatever his average has been over the last few races. He still finished second in this world championship and won some great races, put in some great drives, but I think he knows where his areas to improve are. Horner added. I think there will be a little bit of a reset regarding how he goes about his racing next year as well. He knows it's a big year for him and he'll take a bit of time this winter to reflect on where he needs to improve. I'm sure he'll come back fighting next year. Despite securing second place in the Drivers' Championship and showing signs of improvement towards the end of the season, Sergio Perez's future at Red Bull remains uncertain. With his contract expiring at the end of 2024, speculation surrounding his replacement has intensified. Fueled by whispers of discontent within the team and the recent return of Daniel Ricciardo to Red Bull's sister team, Alpha Tauri. Fans eager to dissect every move and sniff out any hint of a driver's shuffle view Ricardo's presence as a potential omen for Perez's future. The Aussie's undeniable talent and past success with Red Bull make him a tempting prospect for the team, especially if Perez's performance fails to consistently meet their expectations. However, Ricardo's stint at AlphaTauri has been far from a resounding success, casting doubt on his readiness to reclaim his Red Bull seat. Sky's query aimed to determine whether the Red Bull driver selection process for Verstappen's teammate focused solely on Paris and Ricardo. Horner said, well, as a team, you want to feel the most competitive pairing you can have. You want the right dynamic in the team. Max and Checo have been a tremendously successful pairing. Checo, in his three years with us, has finished fourth, third and second. So he's on a good trajectory. 
Daniel is well known to us. It's great to have him back in the Red Bull fold. Of course, everything is open for 2025 onwards. So for us to have options both internally and also externally is no bad place to be. Perez's recent progress at Red Bull has not gone unnoticed by Christian Horner, who remains cautious in his assessment. Ricardo's AlphaTauri performances haven't yet met Red Bull's expectations. Leaving the 2025 driver market for the second seat at Red Bull wide open, internal talent and a dynamic external landscape offer Red Bull diverse options to consider as they navigate this critical decision. Red Bull finds itself with a multifaceted driver market dilemma for 2025. While internal prospects are promising, Paris's future remains uncertain despite recent improvements. Ricardo's AlphaTauri performances have not been fully convincing, leaving the door open for internal and external solutions. With a significant portion of the grid facing contract expiration, Red Bull has many possibilities at their disposal. Perhaps Ricardo's underwhelming return has cast doubt on his ability to seamlessly fill Perez's potential vacancy. This leaves Red Bull with a diverse landscape to explore, from seasoned veterans seeking a second act to unpolished gems waiting to be discovered. As I said earlier, many of the grid will be looking for new contracts for 2025, giving Red Bull plenty of drivers to choose from. Out of contract is obviously Red Bull's Sergio Perez, Williams' Alex Albon and Logan Sargent, Alfa Romeo's Valtteri Bottas and Joe Guano, Haas's Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hülkenberg, Alpine's Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly, both Ferrari drivers Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz are all out of contract. While Charles Leclerc's rumoured five-year Ferrari extension creates 12 more F1 vacancies for 2025, Red Bull's eyes are likely drawn to the uncontracted Ferrari seat. Though Leclerc remains a tempting prospect, the potential availability of Carlos Sainz might be even more intriguing. With Leclerc potentially locked in at Ferrari, Red Bull's 2025 driver search could turn towards Sainz. While acquiring Leclerc would be a monumental feat, Sainz's free agent status would present a more realistic and potential lucrative option. While Sainz has carved a respectable niche at Maranello, securing his maiden F1 victory and even breaking Red Bull's dominance in 2023, Leclerc's clear designation as the team's number one could leave Sainz yearning for a more prominent role elsewhere. However, the potential hurdle shouldn't be underestimated. Leclerc's dominant position at Ferrari and the memories of Sainz's past friction with Verstappen add complexity to the Red Bull scenario. Additionally, the ever-evolving driver market could present another option for Sainz, leaving his future at a crossroads. Before his McLaren breakout in 2019-20, Sainz's talent caught Ferrari's eye, leading to his 2021 arrival. His two podiums with McLaren, Brazil 2019 and Italy 2020, solidified his credentials as Sebastian Vettel's successor. With Red Bull open to external options for 2025, Sainz could emerge as a tempting prospect, assuming Perez doesn't secure a contract extension. However, Paris is determined to improve his 2023 performance, particularly in adapting to the RB19, as he fights to retain his Red Bull seat. During the winter, we'll take the time with the engineers to go through things. Other than that, we're just going to focus massively on making sure that we are able to progress with it through the season. I think that's the main thing. If you think about how we started the year, if we were able to keep progressing through the year, we would have had a much stronger season. Now, Checo is an excellent driver. It is possible, though, unlikely, that he will get a contract extension. Even if he doesn't get a contract extension, the timing is perfect. Most of the other contracts are expiring next year. It will be a perfect opportunity for him to land another job. There you have it. What does the future hold for Checo? Who will be Max Verstappen's driving partner in 2025? What are your thoughts? Tell us in the comments section below.